Hello, world. It's John Pinto, real estate broker, Bon, bon Vivant, roving real estate broker, Bon Vivant. And I am here with Bob Johnson at uh, Home Guard Home Warranty and Rafael Betances uh, with Home Guard uh, Warranty. And uh, that is on the entire empire of Home Guard, or is it uh, the roof termite and home inspections, Rafael? Well, my side will be the inspection size, yes, uh, roof, termite, and home. Very good, very good. Okay, so, uh, Bob, let's get this uh, kicked off because today we're talking about home warranty. Great. And, and, and uh, I understand that uh, the quote-unquote penetration rate that we have with realtors in the industry uh, may leave something to be desired. Uh, do you have it off the top of your head on uh, – how many transactions actually have home warranties involved in them? Well, historically, it really varies state to state. But in California, we went as high as 90%, probably in the early 2000s, um, in that time frame. And then as we went through our recession of 07, 08, 09 time frame, the warranty usage dropped dramatically because of the way the market was at that time. Uh, but now I think we've come back up to where it's close to 80% of resale homes in California have a home warranty of some kind on them. Very good. Now, uh, I occasionally put home warranties even on new houses. I check mark 364 days and just before the new home warranty uh, uh, expires, I have mm -hmm. my clients put it on brand new houses. What do you think about, about that? I think it's a great idea. Um, under the code, as you're probably well aware of, John, in California, the developer is responsible for the first year of the home. Mm -hmm. And then you have the manufacturer warranties that are usually on the appliances, uh, water heater, air conditioner, heaters, and they vary. So we do, uh, as an industry, do a lot with new home construction because when you get into that second year through fifth year or sixth year, depending on the warranty company, um, there are some things that can go wrong. And mm -hmm. so having a new home construction warranty um, on the property that will go into effect after the developer ends his responsibility uh, does give some peace of mind to the buyer that, again, they're not going to have some huge costs to that home they just purchased. Very good. So uh, we talked about penetration uh, of the industry, the home warranty industry, and with real estate brokers being historically 80 to 90 percent. So talk to us a little bit about what the uh, benefits are of uh, realtors advocating for home warranties and putting it on their uh, listings. And uh, what uh, problems might uh, also arise with home warranty? Well, you specifically on listings? There's... Uh, li listings and escrows. Listings and escrows. Okay. Um, well, let's start out with, uh, with listings. Um, it is less used in the state of California to have what they call seller's coverage. Uh, and so usually you will get an agent who at the time of uh, getting a listing agreement will put seller's coverage onto the property that will uh, protect the seller from having to make any big expenses on their heating system, plumbing system, electrical system. And they're also, uh, depending on the company, you have coverage for your air conditioner in seller's coverage as well. Uh, but there are limitations to seller's coverage, so you really have to pay attention to that. The, the benefit, as I just mentioned for the client, is they're getting ready to sell a home. They don't necessarily want to put in a lot of money replacing a dishwasher. Um, but the limitations won't allow you to, let's say, if the heater were to go bad and have to be replaced during seller's coverage, most warranty companies only will pay up to about $500. So they're only looking at doing a repair. They're not looking at doing a replacement. So that's seller's coverage. Now I will say there are some companies, uh, so agents can look at this, 
that will do something unique. And that is, and, and I highly recommend this, you can buy a regular policy at the time of listing. You do not have to do seller's coverage. If you buy the regular policy upfront, so let's use an example, the seller wants to have seller's coverage on their property. The agent has already talked to them about the possibility of having do a home warranty as part of the transaction to give peace of mind to the buyer. Buy the policy at listing time. Then you can transfer whatever is not used of that premium or that uh, policy term over to the buyer at the time it closes. But by doing it this way, you do not have the restrictions that seller's coverage normally has, such as I mentioned the $500 for heating issues. If that heater had to be replaced during the listing period and they had a regular policy on the property, then the warranty company would actually replace the unit. So you eliminate those restrictions. Okay, In the big end, difference between a regular policy or quote unquote a buyer's policy or a homeowner's policy versus a seller's policy is the seller's policy you pay at close of escrow versus the normal policy you would pay out of escrow and pay the premium in advance? Um, Correct. Out of escrow, you would you pay for it in advance. Um, if you do the example that I just mentioned, even if you are in escrow, you still would have to pay for it up front. So it okay. wouldn't be billed at escrow like seller's coverage usually is. You're correct, John. In seller's coverage, uh, usually it is a charge per day that could range roughly, at, I'll just say, 90 cents up to $1.40, depending on the company. Uh, that mm -hmm. you're looking at, which will give you some coverage during that listing period. Uh, seller's coverage usually is only for up to 180 days. Now in our current market, if the house is priced right, and John, you're well aware of getting a house priced right, that um, the house is not gonna stay on the market for 180 days. But when we were in a different market time, there was situations where homes were staying on the market for six months. Right. Okay. So let's storyboard this. Uh, I think uh, the one takeaway from this conversation is as a listing agent, you may be doing your seller a favor, putting the seller in touch with Bob Johnson and just getting a, a normal home warranty that they're buying. That home warranty uh, is going to be a one-year home warranty, correct, uh, Bob? Well, with HomeGuard, it's actually 13 months. Oh, okay, good. So it's a 13 month warranty. Uh, and um, so if you have it, the sellers buy it, the, okay, let, let's figure, I'm getting roof termite home inspection from HomeGuard too. Right, Raphael? Yes, he agrees That's correct. with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm thinking the sequence of events is, hello, Mr. Seller. Thank you for signing your listing. Thank you, Mrs. Seller. Uh, here's an application for a home warranty to take care of any surprises that come up. You will have immediate coverage on it. Uh, I am going, to, we're gonna have your house up and running in two weeks on MLS. We're gonna have the photos. In a month, we'll have it closed. And then in two uh, and sold, and in two months we'll have a close. So your buyer will be able to assume the remaining eleven months of your home warranty. Correct? That's correct. That's ex a great example. And by doing it that way, you're eliminating the limitations that some sellers' coverage have on them. So you're giving the seller a greater value and coverage than they would normally get purchasing a per day seller's coverage policy. Now let okay. me address what usually happens in this situation. The buyer says, well, that's fine, but I want a full-term policy when I close. I don't want an 11-month policy. I want the 13-month policy. No problem. We just prorate out that couple months that's already been used. The seller or whomever can go ahead and pay for that two-month time period and that way the buyer will have a full term policy when they take possession of the property. 
Now the key to this, and this is a little math test for everybody, but if you actually do the two scenarios, having a per day seller's coverage with limitations, or buying the policy up front, not having limitations, and then prorating out that little difference, you will discover that the total pocket or out of pocket dollars by the seller is within a couple dollars, the same amount of money, but the seller for their time period didn't have any restrictions on their home warranty at all. Very good. So I think we just came up with the title of this video in arrears of the video. Uh, it, the thing that I learned as a 47 year old, a 47 year old veteran realtor is the significant benefits of when I take the listing, uh, suggest to the seller that they just buy a one year home warranty in advance. Don't get seller coverage, just get a normal one and then we'll prorate an additional month or two for the buyer and then everybody's covered and there's no surprises for anyone. Is that correct, Bob? Exactly. I, I recommend that. And, and I am surprised when I talk to agents that a lot of companies don't bring up the restrictions, don't bring up the fact that if the seller were to purchase it up front and then do exactly what you described, they're getting a better value for a couple dollars more in the long run than using the other method. Very good. Very good. Okay. So, uh, uh, I think uh, we'll wind up uh, this uh, video momentarily and uh, just to make sure everybody knows how to get a hold of uh, Bob Johnson uh, for a home guard home warranty. Uh, Bob, can you give us your uh, cell phone and your best email address? Sure. My cell phone is 707-454-6950 and my email is b johnson at hghw.com very good and uh rafael when do they uh how do they get a hold of you if they want to order a roof termite home inspection if you need to order a roof termite or a home inspection you can easily uh reach me at my cell phone which is 707-616-8762 um or my email which is r B E T A N C E S, that's Betances. So we in R, my last name, at homeguard.com. Very good. Well, thank you for uh, tuning in, and we'll catch you on the next video.